Let's do some examples of acceleration. Let's do so many that you can do it in your sleep um, and you feel super, super confident, okay? Um, so we were talking about jet fighter blackout, okay? And we were talking about how there is something called, um, you know, 1G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared worth of acceleration. And we were talking about how a jet fighter pilot will actually pass out, which I can't even imagine how scary that is to pass out while you're flying a plane at about 5G, okay? Which is five times 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so we'll, we'll just say roughly five times 10. Um, so we will say roughly 50 meters per second squared. At about 50 meters per second squared, you're passing out. There's not really much to do about it. Um, so here's the thing. Again, we start out with this little equation for acceleration, okay? That the change in velocity over the time interval is the acceleration of an object. So this t, I'm not gonna put t2 minus t1, it's silly. The time interval at which this velocity changes is always just gonna be t from this point on, okay? So here's the deal. We wanna find out what the acceleration is if we go from zero to Mach three, okay? Now, um, you know, one Mach is the speed of sound, which is roughly 330 meters per second, okay? And so three Machs is three times the speed of sound, which is three times that, which is just 990 meters per second, okay? So I'm gonna be going from zero meters per second to 990 meters per second in 4.2 seconds, okay? And you guys can go ahead and race me on the calculation, race me on the calculation. According to my recollection, this is going to be about 235 meters per second squared. Is that bigger than this? Yes, by a lot. This will be many G, okay? If we divide this by 9.8, we can find out how many G that is. That's gonna be roughly 24 G, okay? This would make somebody pass out. I obviously took an extreme example um, just to kind of be fun and silly, but the answer is yes, the poor pilot is passing out, okay? All right, so that's one example. I also wanna be a little bit clear about a distinction between um, average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration, okay? So let's kind of, let's dive into that right now. Instantaneous acceleration or instantaneous velocity for that matter should sound a little bit familiar from calculus because that is the purview of, of the instantaneous world. Um, Newton invented calculus partly to deal with continuously changing curves and continuously changing lines so that you could find not just the average velocity and average acceleration, but actually instantaneous at a specific point. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's have a little graph, okay? Let's say this is velocity versus time, and let's say that my curve looks something like this, okay? So let's say this point here is, you know, V2, and this point here is V1, okay? And so my average acceleration is going to be just this line that connects them. Okay, and the slope of that line is the average acceleration, and we've already said what that is, V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1, which is just this time interval. So this is gonna be T1, and this is gonna be T2. But what happens if we bring this point closer and closer and closer and closer, so that, you know, this this little average guy here gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just the slope right there at that one point, okay? Then we're talking about the instantaneous acceleration, right? And we need to know the actual derivative dv dt of this line in order to calculate the instantaneous acceleration at any given point. So if we find the derivative of this function, right, and so, it, so a of t will be the derivative of the v of t equation at any given point, okay? And so let's do a quick example just to make this a little bit more clear. 
So if you advance to the next slide, you're going to see a problem with a Hercules beetle. Um, so I, I just love doing problems with like really creepy looking bugs. And this is a seriously creepy looking bug. So there's a lot of writing for this problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase right now. Okay. So we have a position, a, a position versus time function um, for this beetle. We know how, how its motion changes, how its position changes over time. Okay. And we're going to see how much we can actually get from that. So it says right here that I, this problem is going to say turtle. Originally, the first time I ever made this problem it involved a turtle. I thought it'd be more interesting to have a Hercules beetle. I'm being very transparent about that. I forgot to change the word turtle. Just ignore turtle and change it to beetle. Thank you. Okay, so uh, imagine that we know that the position function, so we're going to say x of t uh, equals 50 centimeters, this is all in centimeters, uh, plus 2t minus 0 0.065 t squared. Okay, this is how my position of this beetle changes as a function of time. Okay, um, and there's a lot we can we can figure out here. Okay, um, and I'm about to show you how much we could figure out. So let's just do it. A find the turtle's initial velocity, position, and acceleration. So this is going to be part A. Initial position velocity and acceleration. Okay, so um, if we're going to have to do velocity and acceleration, we might as well go ahead and take our derivatives right now. So remember, v of t is just going to be dx dt, right? So if we take the derivative of this with respect to time, that becomes zero, gone. This becomes just two, right? And this will become two times this guy, right? which according to me should be 0.13. So this would be minus 0.13t. You can check me on that if I'm doing my mental math wrong. Okay, um, man, I love this thing. It never gets old. I feel like the beautiful mind guy, okay? Um, here is, so now we know that a of t, our acceleration is just d, uh, sorry, dv dt. Okay, and uh, this derivative here, this, this is a constant, so that's going to go away, which means that our acceleration is just negative 0.13. Um, and this is all centimeters per second, so I'll just, I can just go ahead and put centimeters per second squared. So we see from this that the acceleration is constant. It's a constant negative 0.13. I just want to confirm that I've done that correctly. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Okay, um, so this is our position versus time, our velocity versus time, and our acceleration versus time graphs. Okay, all right, so we want to find out what is the initial position, the initial velocity, the initial a, right? Okay, so initial just happens at t equals zero. Am I right? I'm right, okay. So I put zero in for here, here, and here. The, this goes away, this goes away that leaves me with 50, right? So that means simply that x of zero, my initial position is 50 centimeters. Okay, super simple. Same thing, I just put t equals zero in for here, and for here, that means this goes away, and I get that my v of t, my initial velocity is just two centimeters per second. And here, for our acceleration, it never changes, right? It's always negative 0.13 centimeters per second squared. So my initial, final, middle acceleration is always uh, just negative 0.13 centimeters per second squared. Okay? That takes care of part A. Okay. All right. Let's rock part B. At what time is the velocity of the of the Hercules beetle zero? When is the velocity of this Hercules beetle that's moving around zero? Okay. Okay, so we're going to have to go back to the velocity function, which I believe Okay. 
go back to the velocity function. The velocity function v of t was just the derivative of the position function, which was I got 2 minus 0.13t. Okay, so we want to find out when is this velocity zero? Well, you guys know this from math. You just set that equal to zero. Find out what t will give you a zero v. Okay, so in this case, I have uh, negative 0.13t equals negative two because I'm bringing this two over to the other side, right? Divide both sides by negative 0.13, negative 0.13, and I get t equals, what do I get? I don't know, 16 seconds. Feel free to check me on that. But according to this guy, it takes 16 seconds for the circuit of this beetle to come to rest, to have a zero velocity. All right? Any questions? I wish that you could ask me questions right now, but it'll have to wait till office hours. All right. Uh, we're only going to be doing problems uh, A through C on, for this example. Uh, so we're going to hit C now. And C asks, how long after starting does it take the turtle to return to its original starting point? Okay. So of the three functions, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about the position, velocity, or, um, or acceleration function? All right. Well, it wants to know when it's returning to the starting point. So that's a position, right? So we want to go back to our position function. So x of t was 50 plus 2t minus 0 0.065t squared. Okay, so when, at what time, is this guy going to return back to his starting point? Okay, well, what is its starting point? Where did it start? Remember, from part A, we said that its initial position was 50. So the question is essentially asking, at what time does the position equal 50 again? Okay, so we just simply take 50 equals 50 plus 2t minus 0 0.065 t squared. Okay, obviously, if you subtract 50 from both sides, these guys cancel out. So really, this is a problem of 0 equals 2t minus 0 0.065 t squared. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We can just factor this. 0 equals, we'll pull a t out. And we'll get t minus 0 0.065 t, right? And so what that means that is that this is either t equals 0, which is obvious. Obviously, it's going to be in its initial position at its initial time, right? But this is a little bit more interesting. t minus 0 0.065 t equals 0, okay? And that will give us a time of, if we bring t to the other side and solve for, t uh, sorry, 2 to the other side and we solve for t, I'm getting a answer of, um, well, whatever 0 0.065 divided by 2 is, I don't have it in my notes, but I encourage you guys all to put that in your calculator really quick and put your answer in and find out when that time occurs where it's back at the starting point. Okay, all right, I'll leave you with that. Um, this is, again, a way of finding out instantaneous velocities and instantaneous accelerations by using the original position function of an object, okay? Um, so holler if you have any questions. Next up, we're gonna talk about a quick video about why velocity is not acceleration, which is so important. Students will love to mix up the two. And I want to be very specific about how different they are. I'll see you there.